Morning guys. Uh, today I made a trip out to clean one of my buddy's trailers up for him. He's got a Grand Design Imagine XLS. It's a toy hauler. I think it's uh, around 30 feet overall. Probably 26 foot box. Something like that. Really nice trailer. So I wanted to show you guys an efficient way to wash your camper or your trailer and get a coat of sealant on it if you want to go that far. I do recommend doing that uh, twice a year. If you'll just clean it up real good and get a coat of sealant or wax on it, uh, maybe at the beginning of the season and towards the end of the season, you will keep a nice looking rig forever. So what I like to use is a rinseless wash system. Uh, this is really going to help you out. It's going to be a lot more efficient. Um, instead of coming out here and filling a bucket up with soap and spraying the whole trailer down, getting everything wet, washing half of it, gets dark on you, got to leave, come back the next day, start over. You can just wash sections at a time with this rinseless system. And uh, this is really good stuff. It works really well, does clean very well. I've been using it for probably a year now. Um, I started off with Optimum No Rinse, which is a great product also. This just seems to clean a little bit better. So if you read the bottle, it'll say that, you know, pour this in a bucket and use a sponge or a microfiber cloth and uh, basically get to work. But uh, I like to do a little different. So any caked on dirt or mud, get that off of the water hose. But other than that, if it's just dust, what I do is I use this pump sprayer and I put the same product in there. I go and I pick a section I'm gonna clean. Like just a second ago, I cleaned just this area here. So you spray it with the pump sprayer and then let it sit for a few minutes, let it kind of soak in. And then you'll take a sponge. This is a special sponge made just for rinseless washes. It's called the Big Red Sponge, and it does not scratch. I used it on a dark colored truck for a long time, uh, same products, and never had any scratches on that. This is some amazing stuff. So you just uh, take your pump sprayer, start at the top like you would anything, put a nice mist, it doesn't have to run down the side, nothing like that. You just want to get it slightly wet. And let it sit for a few minutes. So when I get to places like the fenders or in these vents, I do like to flush it out with this stuff. Uh, that does help kind of wash out the, the dust that may have gotten underneath or in the cracks. Um, so yeah, that's that's one thing I'll do. It's the only places I really sit for a few minutes and actually wash out pretty good. Okay, once it's out for a second, take your sponge, you dip it in the bucket. You're gonna squeeze it out till it's not dripping, like this. And you're just gonna start from the top and work your way down just like you're washing a car. Um, don't press down. Just put enough pressure on it to hold the sponge up to the side and wash away. Now you're gonna wanna Flip this thing around, flip it over, use this other side. Uh, you know, do a small section here, flip it over, use the other side, get the rest of the way down, dip it back in the bucket, squeeze it out. It'll clean itself off when you do that. A lot of the dirt will get stuck in these little fingers here on the sponge. It's like the whole beauty of the sponge. Anyway, we're gonna wash the rest of it the same way. And then I'll show you how to dry it. To dry it off, you're going to get a microfiber. You're going to get two microfibers. Uh, this is one I've used on the back. It's still a little, it's a little damp. Key to microfibers, uh, if you get one, it's dry. You wipe, try to wipe the uh, water off. And it doesn't really wipe it off, doesn't soak it in. Uh, you need a damp microfiber to begin with. <clears throat> so you take a microfiber. That is damp, wring it out, and start wiping. 
again, no unnecessary pressure. All you're doing is just getting the water off of here. Um, drying anything you wash is the most important step. Whether you believe that or not, I've found it to be true. Been washing stuff for a long time. It looks like crap if you don't dry it off. Uh, it's gonna cause water spots. And it just overall, all these streaks or whatever you got on here, they just dry up and it just ends up looking terrible. So, whether you're washing it like this or the conventional way, be sure to dry off whatever you're doing. Once you dry everything off with your damp microfiber, you're gonna take a dry microfiber. You're gonna go behind it and you're gonna kind of buff out where uh, you got the streaks and things like that. Once you wipe it a couple times, it'll kind of evaporate and it won't leave streaks. If you have streaks, come back later with another dry microfiber and you can wipe those off. So let's say it's the beginning of the season, you want to get your trailer cleaned up nice. You do the rental system like I just did there. Then the next step you want to do is uh, put a coat of wax on it or seal it. And this is a polish cleaner is what it says, but it has a coat of sealant in it. It's UV resistant and it's made by Duragloss, which is a North Carolina company. So I love to support them. We've been using Dur Duragloss products for a long, long time and uh, they are awesome. So what I do, I take my trusty Harbor Freight Chicago polisher and an orange cutting pad and I'll add eh, four, three or four pea-sized drops of this stuff on the pad and then I'm going to go over all the uh, fiberglass areas. Then you're going to let that dry just like you would a wax and once it hazes up you'll wipe it off. Um, I use these Rag Company Edgeless Pearls. They're a really uh, low GSM rag, so it's like a low knit to it. So that low knit really takes off the uh, wax much better than a big heavy rag. Not sure you can see it in the camera, but I've uh, I polished this back section already. I was letting it set up. Unfortunately, this morning, it's very humid out and it's been taking a while to get this thing to dry off, but I think we got it now. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe it down and then I'm going to jump on to the other side and I'm going to polish and show you how easy it is. basically it. You're going to make a quick pass over it unless you got scratches or something you really need to get off of there. It is a polish. I do use this orange pad that has a little bit of cut to it. Overall it's a fairly soft pad. If there's anything stuck to the uh, fiberglass it's going to get that off. It'll, it'll help you clean it up a, a good bit. These are the areas that this polish really helps out. hope you can see that line there. It runs all the way up. And that's from the seals on the slide. This is the side of the slide. You're going to have little spots like this that are all over the slide. You got these almost look like scratches. I don't think they are. I think it just comes from that seal flipping over. So anyway, you're going to have things like that. You're going to have areas like this. It's uh, probably old grease or it doesn't feel like grease. It's not super slippery. It's not going to destroy your pad when you run over it. You got places like this where probably sealant. It's gotten a little further out. These areas. So this polish with this orange pad, it should take all that off. So I got a coat of sealant here. As you can see, the line up the side is gone. A whole lot of this other stuff that was out here in the middle is gone up by the slide. It's nice and clean. Now, once you use this for a season, you're going to have a lot of that stuff back just from the seal going in and out and rubbing up against it. But if you do this twice a year, it'll put a nice layer of sealant on here. It'll make it a lot easier to clean up next time. 
and this stuff is so easy to work with. I'm putting it up there with the polisher everywhere that I can. Uh, in places like above this vent here, I'm putting that on my hand just because I got a six inch polishing pad there. Um, so I just put, up, put all that on my hand. I let it sit for about 20 or 30 minutes and then I come wipe it off. It wipes off really easy. It's great stuff. All right, we got it done. Look at this sweet setup. Really nice truck. the next day and I just wanted to add a few things uh, got home last night started editing the video and I noticed that um, it's really hard to tell how good that sealant works um, it really leaves a nice shine on everything you use uh, but it was really cloudy yesterday so I uh, couldn't really see that a few things to add about rinseless washes uh, you don't have to have a water hose available that's kind of the point of it um, yesterday we were at a storage unit they did have a water spigot around the corner, but we didn't use it at all. Uh, what I did the night before, I just filled my bucket up um, with my 914, and I threw the sponge in there, and then I put a lid on top of it. As soon as I mixed it up, I put it in the back of the truck. Um, I drove a little over an hour the next morning and started washing that trailer. So say you're trying to wash a little at a time, you know, do one section a day on your camper. Um, as long as your water doesn't get too ridiculously dirty, you can throw the lid on it. Once you mix it up, say you wash a section, throw the lid on it, and then the next day come back out, pull the lid off, wash another section. You can do that continuously. So for me personally, uh, I wash my truck with it. I wash all three cars that we own with it. Uh, every time, say I'm gonna wash two or three in a row, I will switch the water out. I do it just because. Uh, it's just insurance for me to keep from scratching our vehicles up. Um, they claim you do not have to do that, and I believe it, I really do. Um, took me a long time to trust this stuff, but it is, it is great. It really does what they say. Another product we used yesterday uh, that I didn't show was this uh, 303 Aerospace Protectant. Um, I use that on all plastics. Uh, there's a lot of black plastics on there, the fenders, um, just parts that cover like the license plate, things like that. So anyway, any, any plastics, uh, if you get on top, your air conditioned vent covers, the covers that go on the vents, just anything plastic. I recommend spraying this on a microfiber towel and wiping it down. Um, it'll, it'll make them shine real nice and it also protects it from UV rays. It's great stuff. Using, I've been using this stuff for years. Uh, Duragloss also makes a rinseless wash. I use this on our vehicles every now and again. I didn't use it yesterday because we were gonna polish the trailer and this has uh, wax added into it. And it's not really necessary if you're trying to clean everything up and get it completely clean before you put a coat of polish on it. Um, I just kind of avoid using something with a wax in it because you're not really using that wax. So on the walk around at the end you probably noticed the uh, tires had a nice sheen to them, not super shiny, not crazy looking. Uh, what was used was Chemical Guys VRP. That was actually applied the last time when my buddy washed it and once we backed the trailer in I put another coat on there. So this VRP is awesome stuff, doesn't give too much of a shine. Uh, unless you put several layers on it. Um, adding those layers gives it more shine so you can basically tone it to whatever you want. So if you want it to just look really nice like that, like the tires do on the, on the camper we showed yesterday, uh, just put one layer on there and it looks really good. In three to five minutes it dries right up. It doesn't sling all over your vehicle. It's really good stuff. I really like it. Been using this for, I don't know, maybe four or five years now. It's really good stuff. So one thing to mention about polishing on a camper or anything with vinyl decals, 
Uh, really inspect those decals before you get started. If you see that they're peeling up on the edges, stay away from them. Uh, you can polish that area by hand. I'd let the owner know, uh, or if you are the owner, well, you know, if it's peeling up a little bit on the edge, I would take a razor blade and just cut that little edge off and get it back to where it's stuck down on the trailer. But anyway, if you're, if you're polishing someone else's, leave that area alone, polish by hand or wax by hand, seal by hand, uh, but do not get the polish from near those. It will tear those off. So my last tip before I go is um, always, if you have time, add extra layers of wax or protection. Uh, some would argue this is unnecessary, and maybe it is, but I've, over the years, have found that it really helps. So, say on that camper yesterday, I went over it with a polisher and it got scratches out and it left layer protection. It doesn't hurt to go back and add another layer of that sealant by hand, and it definitely is going to get the spots you missed. It's going to add another layer of protection on to what's there. Um, I wouldn't do it immediately after I let it sit maybe an hour and let it cure for, for a little while and then add that extra layer. So anyway, that's a helpful hint. Um, it should help your camper look beautiful for years and years and then if you want to sell it down the road it's going to look so much better than everyone else's and you won't have trouble getting rid of it. So thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Uh, be sure to leave comments below. Let me know what method you use to clean your trailer, camper, car, truck, whatever. This has always been a hobby for me. I've always loved cleaning vehicles and, and things like that. A camper can be a daunting task, but it's really not as bad if you break it down in sections. Waterless wash system really helps you do that. It really makes things easier and you can work at your own pace. You don't have to worry about running out of daylight or if you got weather coming up or something like that. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.